As, as Boresha Sako Society Limited, we would like to remind all our esteemed members and the general public to take necessary precautions in helping stop the spread of COVID-19. We urge our members to minimize cash transactions and leverage on technology. Dial star 434 hash to access our M Boresha services for withdrawal to M Pesa, mobile loans and salary advance, purchase of airtime, inter account transfer, deposit to FOSA account, shares contribution, school fees deposit, loan repayment, mini statement, and many more. To register for Emboresha, download registration form from our website www.boreshasako.co.ke Fill and forward the scanned copy to admin at boreshasako.co.ke Boresha Sako, united we prosper. All right, good evening and welcome to our weekly show, The Expert View. And uh, as usual, every Wednesday at a time like this, Baringo News always seeks to get an expert opinion on a given issue uh, that is specific to uh, the people of Baringo and also those any other person who will be watching this program. And tonight we have uh, Duncan uh, Barakebo, who is a leadership trainer, a coach, and also a mentor. So tonight we're looking at uh, the journey into being a leader. And I think uh, the, the conventional ways of defining a leader in our society, most of us look at leadership more into the political leadership, but everyone is a leader in their own capacity. So Duncan is a leadership uh, trainer, he is a mentor and an expert on issues mentorship. And his profile will definitely justify why we are having him here tonight. Uh, Duncan holds a, a master's in management and leadership from the University of Africa. He has a bachelor of science in communication. So you can see the linkage between leadership and communication. He'll be helping us to dive as well into that because it's something that he has specialized in. And interestingly enough, uh, Duncan, who is a son of Baringo, born and brought up in uh, Boborin village, Baringo Central, he has a background of medicine. He's a clinical medicine uh, specialist, or rather he's, he's a clinician, if I may say. Maybe he'll help us to define it very well as we continue. So look, you can see the journey into his uh, expertise in leadership so maybe without further ado karibu sana duncan thank you very much sk yeah so i think uh, let me give you maybe a minute or two to introduce yourself then we can continue with our conversation on the journey to leadership thank you very much uh, Komen. sk i think it's a pleasure to be here in baringo news live uh my name is duncan barkebo chip Cheng. I am a son of Baringo, born and uh, bred in uh, the uh, village of Bokorin in Riwa uh, sub-location, in a Wale location, a Barnett Division uh, in Baringo Central. So I am a leadership uh, trainer, coach, and a mentor uh, uh, as a director and founder of Leadcast Limited, uh, where we, we train people and, and coach people on leadership. Uh, but uh, currently, I'm a clinician also with a background in clinical medicine, and that I think would be an interesting story to tell on yeah. how one can transition from uh, one field to another. Thank you very much. Uh, very well. I think uh, that, that's a very uh, good introduction. And definitely anybody who's looking at your profile from clinical medicine, transiting into leadership uh, training, and even specializing more into building capacity among people who are purposing to be leaders in their own capacity. And I think that brings us to the conversation tonight. So maybe uh, tonight we are just talking about leadership, uh, the journey towards being a leader. How can you define a leader based on your experience as a leadership uh, consultant? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, I and I like that uh, that that discussion because most of the time when people think about leadership or they think about a leader, they believe uh, this is somebody who is having a big title, who is a political person, and therefore they, they that is a leader. But uh, what I can define in a simple way that a leader is basically someone who has the capacity to influence uh, uh, something to achieve a certain objective. And most of the time, the objective is basically to empower other people. And it starts with the will and the passion and having a purpose in life. I think uh, that basically defines who a leader is. So do you have a, the will and purpose to do what you're doing in your own capacity? that defines you as a leader in the position that you're holding at the moment. You could be a family person, you could be the head of the family, you could be holding the position of a firstborn. Do you look like one? Do you have the passion? Exactly. So that is the definition of leadership according to Duncan Barkebo, who is a leadership expert, a trainer, mentor, and also um, a coach. So, uh, looking into your profile, you swung from being a medic to specializing on issues leadership. Why the detour? Let me call it the detour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a detour, really, because a lot of people, including my mother, still has not believed that uh, uh, the doctor in the family has moved away from the doctorship to, to do leadership and other things. And most people have got baffled with this question. And I've received a lot of questions around this this issue. But I usually put it in a simple way and say, yes, uh, in, in life and, in, in, and, and even the basic concept of leadership is that we all uh, ought to be ready to take a detour in life. I think um, one of the, uh, the, 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 the skills and the, and, the, and, the, and the qualities of a leader is that their, their ability to move from um, or be flexible or adaptable to new challenges. But most importantly, I think as I practiced medicine for over 10 years uh, in different public hospitals and many places, I realized that there is a gap in the society. And one of the major gaps was the lack of leadership. A lot of things in the society are fallen because of basic things of lack of leadership. And I saw people graduating from colleges I saw people coming in with big degrees, with masters, with PhDs to come and work in places, but their biggest undoing was a lack of leadership skills. And therefore, I, I got that in my heart and I got a passion to go out and help others in leadership because leadership is not about being in a position or a title. Leadership is about that capacity to influence and it comes from the heart of an individual. So. I am here uh, to offer that solution and help people to really tap into their leadership in them so that they don't uh, enter into the society with the thinking that just because I hold this position and therefore I am a leader and you'll find that they are struggling a lot and a lot of uh, people are suffering because they don't understand the concept of leadership in itself. Wow, and I think um, my interest now is how your detour has helped you in your work environment at the moment, because you, you, you've taken a master's in communication, sorry, a, a, a bachelor of science degree in communications, and you've also considered to master in leadership. Did you identify a gap in your area of work that you had to go through that direction? You mentioned about the society, but I think that your immediate society is your workplace. How Absolutely. are you applying these skills at the moment? Has it seen you even rise in ranks? Maybe you can share that. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I think this is true. And I usually tell people that uh, leadership principles never, never lie. And they, they always uh, make an impact in somebody's life. And I've seen that personally as an individual in my life. First of all, from uh, delving into communication, uh, learning about communication. And I think... As human beings, we are social beings and communication skills is a critical element for everyone. No matter, there's a saying which says, no matter how much you know, if you cannot communicate and explain to others, then it doesn't matter much. And people don't care how much you know until you can explain to them. And for example, in communication, we say there's a principle called the grandmother principle. Can you be able to communicate in a very simple way 
that even the grandmother in the village can understand, that shows that you have understood your topic. So communication has helped me grow a lot because I've been able to sell myself and I've used that skill to sell myself and sell my skills and sell my uh, my brand as it were, and has uh, helped me to rise from uh, being basically in, in a uh, outpatient or basically being a clinician in a hospital to being a senior technical advisor for uh, a huge uh, non-governmental organization where I oversee activities in more than five counties in this country, in Eastern Kenya. And, and those are basically borrowed from the skills of communication, the skills of leadership, because if you look at it at the end of the day, people uh, are ready to be led, but at the end of the day, it is the leadership skills which will help you to uh, get into and help other people. And when you help, help as much as people as you can, you can be able to rise and people will always get attracted to you and organizations will quickly come and looking for you because they feel attracted to you. Uh, that, that, that sounds like a smooth run, but I think I'll I'll be asking you about the kind of challenges that you've gone through before because yours is like you followed your passion of getting to understand how people can influence others and suddenly it is also working to your advantage. You've said you're working with one of the largest non-governmental organizations in Kenya and I think to me, that's a, an achievement and you may have done it out of passion, but people are seeing the fruits of or rather the, the advantage, the added advantage that you do have having gone through med medicine and now jumped into leadership. Now, uh, what to say, well, maybe leadership is inborn and now what on a summer lab day familiar walizaliwa na kipawa cha wongozi. What's your take about that perspective? Because yours was out of a problem you identified in the society and you went into understanding how to be resolved. And you, aside from you earning that knowledge, you are now practicing it and even building capacity among other people. What's your take on that belief? Yeah, so I think uh, that has been a, what we call a leadership myth. Uh, and if you, you 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 go around and people usually believe that it is because this person has born, been born from this family, their grandfather used to be an area chief uh, or is used to be a politician and therefore this runs in the family. Uh, really, that is a myth in the society because there is a saying which says trapped in every person is a leader in themselves. And therefore, it is upon the person to discover that leadership within themselves. So there is the element of somebody being uh, an understanding and getting the revelation of the leadership within themselves to come out and, and be the leader. Because the society really has enough problems which seeks leadership. If you may be just a, a, a Sunday school teacher in a village a church, and that is leadership in itself. You might see, for example, all the people who are struggling to get water uh, for themselves and you take an initiative and collect a few people of yourself or your peers to fetch water for those older people that is already leadership i mean you could be a leader in any place and therefore the myth that there are people who are born with leadership and there are those ones who are not born with it is not true at all because uh it is something which you can learn it is something which you can take it up upon yourself and take responsibility and move it because the society is full of opportunities to lead. And, uh, and I can give an example for myself is that when I reached, for example, uh, uh, I, was, I was a student in, uh, in primary school, in Pokorin primary school, uh, in those years of the early 90s and, and 80s. And, and there were opportunities to lead because you, we had debating clubs and we could quickly jump in and become the speaker of the class. Uh, we had the opportunities, for example, to uh, care for uh, issues at home, and we would uh, uh, run to that. And in the college, that opportunity still came up because people uh, are looking for leadership in, their, in the society. So leadership being born is a myth. Anybody can learn to be a leader, and in every person, there is a leader trapped in them. And usually, I usually say, for you to realize that, and for you to not learn that you can have an opportunity to, to be a leader, look at an issue which you feel uh, you, your heart is bleeding for it. And, and I've seen many people come to me and say, oh, 
I see these children, they, they, they are struggling and all that. What can I do? That's already a leadership uh, uh, gene or a leadership uh, idea which is coming to you. And uh, therefore, yeah. leaders are, of course, they are born. There's no leader who drops from heaven, but leadership is not really inborn. <laughs> Exactly. It's something, leadership is something that you inculcate and uh, clearly from the expert here, leadership is something that you can practice, learn it and get into yourself or rather have it within you, then you can practice it and be among the leaders who are seen in the society. And I think for what I'm getting to understand from uh, your take on the belief that um, leadership is inborn or maybe someone is born with it is that uh, I think the environment that somebody could be born in could actually influence the kind of person who is being brought up. So if someone is brought up in a family of, of leaders, then it means such people may acquire one or two skills without going into a class. And like for now, some of us who may have to go to trainings and uh, capacity building sessions with, uh, with Leadcast Limited to give us an opportunity to learn to be leaders and i think uh, things that are coming out clearly is about the ability to influence and i think that is a stand a characteristic that is standing out in this conversation could you maybe give more um characteristics of a leader mm. yeah so so as you rightly put it uh there the are characteristics which really demonstrate our, our leadership and uh, for that case i want to say that the baseline and the, and, the, and the basic characteristics of a leader, first of all, is about courage. The main thing is that you need to be courageous in, 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 in something. One of the critical elements of being a leader is to show and demonstrate courage. People uh, are, are naturally fear, and it's a normal thing for human beings. Even in science, we say fear is a protective mechanism. When something comes to fear, there is always the, uh, the, the, the rush and the run to protect yourself. But as a leader, you don't actually fear the fear, but you need to understand the fear and demonstrate courage to go ahead and, and be seen and be able to take responsibility of that. The other thing which I, I want to say, a good characteristic of a leader, is what we call consistency. One of the critical things of a leader is consistency. And uh, it is clear that for you to be a leader, and I'll give you so many examples of people who have managed to be uh, leaders in their areas. One is that they are very consistent. And uh, I, I overheard one time an interview about uh, uh, Eliud Kipchoke on how he, he came up with the No Human is Limited uh, mantra and being the world champion. And, and it was interesting because he said every morning he does 38 kilometers run. And he was asked, on a Sunday? Yes, yes, on a Sunday. Is it when it's raining, do you run? Yes, even when it's raining, I run. So consistency is a characteristic of a leader and very, very important. The, la the, the third thing is the element of compassion. One of the things which a leader distinguishes themselves is the compassion to people. A leader does not uh, thrash or step on others for him to, 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 to succeed. There's always that compassion and need to help out on other people. Because without that, you cannot help others. And, and as I said in the definition of leadership in the start, we said leadership is the capacity to influence our other people and with an aim of empowering and, and, and capacity building other people to achieve more than even yourself. So without compassion, you cannot, you cannot succeed. And even in, I, I usually quote the Bible and I say, even when Jesus was seeing the 5,000 people uh, who are waiting for him at the, at, the, at, the, at the seashore, waiting for him to address them. And, 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 and he felt compassion and he felt something. Even when the disciples came and said, oh, master, these people have eaten nothing from morning. There was that compassion and he said, let us do a miracle of, the, of breaking the bread. So consistency, compassion is critical for leadership. But most importantly now, even if you, you don't have much, it's about integrity. Integrity is a, is a is, is a characteristics of leadership which means that you are what you say and you stand with what you say you we see you in the morning and we see you in the evening and we can be sure that you have integrity integrity basically comes from the 
the, the, the Greek word of integers, and people know integers, or integrity, or stat statues. So you see a statue, a statue will be a statue, whether it is raining, whether it is sunny, whether people uh, do anything, but it will still be there. So integrity is critical for leadership. So I think those four characteristics are critical for uh, leadership in any person to take over. Very well. And I think that was very important so that we can really get to understand what being a leader is all about. Mm -hmm. And maybe to just summarize what Duncan has said, you've uh, talked about the definition of being a leader. Mm -hmm. And the point here is, can you influence? And what are you influencing? Or rather, what is in your mind while you're influencing? You're influencing with an aim of empowering others within whichever the environment that you're working in or you are the, or rather the environment that you're enclosed in. And uh, the characteristics of a leader, they are coming out very clearly that uh, you should be having an ability to influence, as I've said in the definition. And uh, there is a bit of being courageous. Are you courageous enough to even make a decision? When people are facing south, can you face north and stick to your decision as the correct one. Uh, the courage, uh, you need to be consistent. And of course, are you compassionate as well? Do you consider other people who are working with you, the people who are around you? They say that siyasa ni game chafu. And it involves shortchanging and any other sort of things. but. I think that is more of into uh, democracies that are still developing. And maybe as we move, we will get to have leaders who can, or other politicians who are leaders at the same time. And we are not saying that all politicians are not leaders. And finally, integrity, which is always sounding everywhere. Even the constitution itself, it has a whole chapter <laughs> handling issues integrity. And it is used as a sift to determine whether you are fit to hold a public office or not. And uh, you've heard from Dar Duncan Barkebo, who is a leadership trainer, a coach, and a mentor. You're listening to his uh, nuggets of wisdom on issues to do with leadership. And should you have a question, the comment section is open for you. You can drop it there. Let's uh, see what you have. Is it a question? Is it a concern? Is it something that you need uh, to be clarified? Have it on the comment section. We will be coming back uh, in uh, maybe like 10 minutes time so that we can look at your questions and Duncan will be able to attend to them. Uh, moving forward to the things that I wanted us to discuss. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm about to lose track because uh, <laughs> and I'm also trying to take my notes as well here so that uh, we be on the same page together. Now, uh, you, you, you're running a leadership and capacity uh, training and a mentorship firm. What is your approach like? You've defined the qualities of a leader. When you assemble these people to take up your program, what is your approach like? Yeah, so, yeah, so thank you very much. I, I and, and of course, my team, we run a, a leadership uh, development uh, company, which is called Leadcast Limited. And our approach is basically uh, uh, tailor-made and it's basically looking at individual uh, perspectives. And uh, we don't just uh, uh, assume that everybody uh, is a leader because we believe that everybody has a unique calling and a unique capacity in themselves. Nobody has been, uh, is a copycat to themselves. And we usually even say in leadership that authenticity is the key thing that you don't need to copy something else say something in your heart which is unique to you and run for that and therefore in uh, at leadcast we look at that we try to find out that purpose which is trapped in you and help you uh, ignite it and rediscover it and it's surprising whenever that happens you find people quickly rising exponentially despite the fear where they are in and and we've helped people uh, grow so much and, and, and they've come back to really realize that they used to have this in their part. So we have online courses for people. Uh, currently we are developing a whole online course which is going for four weeks 
uh, for people to learn and uh, soon that will be available but uh, uh, before then we've been doing group coaching and individual coaching for people so that they are able to, to to really ignite the leadership in themselves it doesn't matter the background which somebody comes from i've mentored people from human resources i've brendan mivel who are doctors i've mentored people who are teachers and whenever they uh they, they they are teaching in the class for example as a teacher if that leadership is ignited in themselves they become a different teacher and they stand out and they realize that they had a calling not necessarily even to to, to, to just a teaching profession but to other things in the society so our approach is basically individualistic and we don't come up with solutions to you we just ignite what is trapped in you and uh, usually one of my uh, big teachers uh, Dr. Miles Mundro usually says that because every person is a leader trapped in them and there's a seed in them. When that seed is watered and it is given fertilizer and it is put in the right environment, you are able to get a fruit. And when that is up, happens, people come to take fruits. And people don't really, I usually teach people that it doesn't really mean that people come to you as an individual. They come because you have a fruit which they can get and pluck it from you. And when they get that fruit is original, it is sweet, they will still come back and come back to you because leaders do not choose followers. It is actually followers who choose a leader. Yeah. Wow. Leaders do not choose followers. So it is the followers who choose the leaders. I think that's my take home tonight. And I believe it is also something to take home to anyone who's watching now and those who will be watching later. I'm also seeing that uh, you are beginning to to move or rather to adapt into the new normal right i hear that you're 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 preparing online classes that are running for four weeks and i think uh, i might be one of your first <laughs> subscribers because i think uh, talking of uh, you or rather your approach is about igniting the potential that is within each and every one of us i think that's actually it because everyone was born the same way and uh, we may have been raised in different environments but at the end of the day we still have the potential that only needs proper nurturing as you say so that seed of leadership within you let it be nurtured now into leadership and reading you've i i knew you in 2013 through uh, facebook and of course the, the, the friends that we share together and uh, looking at what you've been doing you've been doing a lot of writing and uh, looking at uh, much of what you write it comes with either a personal experience or maybe things that you consume the content that you consume from other people like the miles monroe you've uh, the, you, the person you just mentioned a few minutes ago uh, what is the relationship between learning and leadership absolutely and uh, uh, that the relationship is like siamese twins that is they are conjoined in the in the head and and a leader has to be a learner because one of the key qualities of a leader is to be a lifelong student. Uh, I usually give an example of my grandfather. He used to tell me that one day there were two old men sitting around 90 years old and they were watching some goats grazing on, a, on an escarpment and there was, uh, the goats were balancing on stones. And all of a sudden one goat fell down and, and rolled over uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the downhill. And one of the old men said, I've never seen a goat in my life who has fallen down from a rock. So life is about learning. You can never finish learning. And a leader is a learner. Uh, on a daily basis, a leader is a student. Uh, because whatever you learn, you realize that as the more you learn, the more you realize that you don't know much. The, the, the more you learn, the more humble you become. The more you learn, the more you understand that there are different perspectives of something which you see. There's always three perspectives. There's your perspective, there's the other person's perspective, and there's the truth, which all of us are seeking to find the truth. So the reality is that leadership and learning cannot be separated. And, uh, and, I, and I usually mentor people and even teach people that you can actually and uh, an MBA through YouTube, through uh, the online medias, there are books which are written, there are people you can listen to, there are so many places where you can learn. And most of the time is that life is a school in itself. Most people confuse the academic or the, 
the academic learning to be that I have learned. When you've achieved maybe a master's or a PhD and you say you have learned, but the real learning is about the practical and the life learning which occurs in the society and in, on a daily basis. And therefore, as a leader, you can never far run away from learning and learning is a daily it's a daily thing. And as I usually joke, when you when you when you go to the bathroom, you take a shower. Of course, in the morning you don't say, "Oh, I took a shower yesterday." Say, "For today, I'm not taking a shower." Or I can go for one week with the, with one shower. Learning is a daily thing, just the way uh, you want to take a bath on a daily basis, because there's something new to learn on a daily basis. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, learning is like taking a shower every day. You never question <laughs> whether you took a bath yesterday or not. That's, uh, that's quite an interesting analogy. And uh, of course, they say learning is a continuous process, and it is a dosage that has been recommended by the doctor himself, who is into leadership and training and also mentorship and coaching. Uh, <laughs> into the same writing, or rather reading, learning, and leadership. We also notice that you're a, you're an author. You have I've come across one of your books, and I'm actually halfway reading it. Uh, memoirs, the memoirs. Is it memoirs of a village boy? Is it is that is that the name the name of the book? Yes. I think yes. If I got it right, I'm not very good at uh, <laughs> picking the titles, but the content is what I'm very keen on. Um, what has inspired you also to go into writing books? I've been reading the articles and suddenly, boom, I think this year is when I saw it as translated into a book. What has oh, led yes. you into that? Is it part of the, 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 the pursuit for knowledge in leadership? Yes, uh, I, I uh, thank you for reading the book. It's called Memoirs of the Village Boy. Uh, and it's all related to leadership because uh, I, 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 I read a lot and I read uh, our leadership books. I also read African literature, which is, I really like African literature. Writers like Chinu Achebe, Wallace Oyinka, the Peter, uh, Peter Abrams of this, of this world. Uh, they really inspire me and uh, they tell the story uh, of the village. And I, 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 I had it in my heart and I thought, there's a story in, in our village in Baringo uh, and in, in, in coming from a village, having been brought up in the village and that life, and uh, having started living in the city in, a, in, a, in the other phase of life, I felt that there's a story which needs to be told. So I really took leadership and said, who else can tell this story? And, and, and to me, I felt that it was just a story which was supposed to be told. And I took it upon myself to, to put it as, part, as, as, as a responsibility to tell that story of my village and, 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 the, and the life in the village. So the memoirs of the village boy really is a story which needed to be told. That is what I say, because most people, and I found it universal, most people have been brought up in the villages and we celebrate this life. It is not that uh, a village life should not be taken that they are, uh, it is uncivilized or something, but it's a, it's a life which needs to be celebrated. And therefore I brought it out with all its challenges and weaknesses and the strengths, but my objective was that that story needs they needed to be told. So uh, from the eyes of the village boy, I told the story of the village, uh, and most people can relate to it. And talking about you telling a story which actually needed to be told, you know, as it begins, you're mentioning the number of you as a the siblings within one house the number of boys and the girls, the ratio of course was biased on the side of the boys. And how, you're still wondering up to now how your mom used to manage <laughs> all those number of boys. And I think it is relatable even on my end because we are a family of seven and six out of the seven, we are boys. And of course, they're the, they're the occasional um, family relatives coming in to join you for like a month or two some even stay for a lifetime there are those who, who, whom we grew up together and you could think that they were your sisters until the day they got married <laughs> so that's when you realize you realize but you grew up you grew up together so looking at that i think it's kind of reflects most of our what we, or rather the kind of lives that we've led, or rather through the environments that uh, some of us, most of us actually were, were brought up in. And clearly we notice that um, 
you you're uh, it's it's like it is it is telling more about you and why why i'm even bringing this up is because look at the village boy and where he is now and as the village boys and girls where we are right now with regards to leadership i think it clearly shows that it is a journey it's something that uh, you can inculcate within you from the books that you read from the courses you take up to where you can be but maybe uh you you've told us more about it but uh, of, of interest is uh, um maybe you, you've said it was to a story that needed to be told and with regards to leadership now what can you say about this journey of this village boy to where he is? Sijamaliza kitabu bado. So maybe you can help us to summarize <laughs> with respect to the topic of the day, the oh, leadership yeah. journey. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I think to just uh, summarize is that the story of the memoirs of the village boy uh, is told from the eyes of a character called Kipsorno. Uh, oh, 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 he gets entangled in a love uh, relationship with a, a girl called Jelala, which yeah. really is a common thing in the society as, 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 uh, as teenage boys and all that. But they, they, there are lessons to be learned in that. And, and uh, as they go and they, and, they, and they go through this village life, they, uh, we, we actually see the village boy, uh, in this case now Kipsorno, growing to to be uh, a lover of academics and education. And he actually becomes a few of the people who join the university. And as they go to the university, we see the society coming together and the village coming together to help this person go to the university. Fundraising, people bringing their pumpkins, people bringing cassavas to sell, and some people giving him gifts, even including 10 shillings from the old uh, mamas and the old shoshos to just tell him to go there. And they call him uh, uh, an arrow in the in the quiver of the village that is an arrow for the village now and i bring about even uh, the issue of the element of uh, people praying for him that he may not come back with uh, a wife after university that he may still retain the village values so this uh, 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 the village boy grows to to become a leader in education in his society and even as his girlfriend jelalan tries to uh, advice him. He, he actually encourages Chelalang to be uh, to to finish her studies before they get uh, into uh, the deeper parts of the relationship. So this story of the village boy demonstrates leadership in the element that this is a person who really uh, uh, encouraged somebody to 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 pursue education. He himself pushed for education and he grew to be a, a, a graduate in the village, and he's go he now goes to the city. Uh, and uh, he goes to the city, gets a job, gets good money, uh, marries Chelalang in the long run. They set up their home in the village and they become uh, a, a, a village kind of uh, uh, a person who has grown to be a village mod a role model. Although now we get the downside of the society now, whereby somebody has gone to the city and they have lost the village values. And, and the city has a lot of challenges and, and he gets entangled into another relationship with somebody in the city. That story. Uh, now becomes his undoing. And uh, the beauty is that as the story ends, he gets humbled by the fact that he forgot the village values which taught him about uh, uh, integrity, honesty, valuing relationships and taking care of the family and all that. And eventually he goes back home humbled. So it is a story about a person leading themselves but also getting, facing challenges and being able to be ready to even take a detour, as you would call it, back yeah. to the original uh, intention and the original purpose. So really, this was a story which needed to be told. And I thought uh, I did my small bit to, to give justice, to, to, to help somebody uh, from the village, uh, uh, eyes of the village boy. Well, so you've had a summary of the book and i think now the details is upon you to go get yourself a copy of the of the book then get to understand the journey in the eyes of a village boy and that is none other than kepsorno himself and it looks like actually you are the you are the kepsorno who is being described with that <laughs> so, so maybe uh, somebody is already saying that we are spoiling we are, we are spoiling it for for other people but i'm telling you every book every book has a summary or other 
Yeah, what do you call it? They call it pro. Is it prologue? The synopsis. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, the synopsis of the book. Mm. So. Isaac uh, Kiplagat, Sione Kamayo, ni spoiler. <laughs> Go get yourself the book. He, he needs to read the, 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 the Junji bits in the book, which I have left out, which they can be exactly. able to enjoy. Yeah, there's and, a twist uh, and turn to it. Yeah. Exactly. And by the way, at the end of, towards the end of the show, Duncan will have a, a chance to read uh, a section of one of the chapters that he, loves, he, he chooses to read for us tonight. So there'll be a book reading or rather a chapter reading towards the end of the show. So maybe before we um, go into our last last questions, before we get to hear what people are saying, maybe we can just take a small a short break, a short commercial break, then we come back in 30 seconds. Don't go away. I can see we are quite a number of us who are watching tonight. Don't go away. We'll be coming back in a short break. As Asporesha Sako Society Limited, we would like to remind all our esteemed members and the general public to take necessary precautions in helping stop the spread of COVID-19. We urge our members to minimize cash transactions and leverage on technology. Dial star 434 hash to access our Emboresha services for withdrawal to Mpesa, mobile loans and salary advance, purchase of airtime, inter-account transfer, deposit to FOSA account, shares contribution, school fees deposit, loan repayment, mini statement and many more. To register for Emboresha, download registration form from our website www.boreshasako.co.ke Fill and forward the scanned copy to admin at boreshasako.co.ke Boresha Sako, united we prosper. Welcome back. Uh, that was a quite a short commercial break. We hope none of us left <laughs> the, the stream. I can see the number is constant. So that was quite uh, patient of you. Now, um, before I get back to some of the things that I had lined up to ask, I think it is only fair to listen to what the viewers are saying. Let me rush through. I've seen a number of questions from uh, people who are watching. And um, there's a gentleman here. Actually, it is Isaac. Isaac, you're still you're already reading the book, and you're saying we are spoiling it for you. Uh, he's saying I'm reading the book Memoirs of a Village of the Village Boy, and he's asking whether you're the author. I think uh, Isaac, you've been given that answer. Dan Canberra Cable is the author of that book. Um, uh, Dan Ndungu Morop, he's saying his book Memoirs of a Village Boy catches and revolves around the life that shapes leadership and i think that was my perspective even that since the time i engaged you on hosting you today i think that is what or rather that was actually what was running through my mind simon kelom is saying that's my uncle i'm proud of you duncan simon kelom is watching from washington dc so now we're gonna my fans man uh, there was a question by a lady, Judy Jekwech. You're saying, uh, I'm following Kinley, and she's asking, what is the, dif the difference between transactional and transformational leadership? Maybe that's something you need to note as I keep uh, getting to read out the questions. So I hope you've noted that, Duncan. Mm -hmm. uh, transformational and transactional leadership was the difference. And uh, someone is echoing what you said, or rather, yeah, he's saying, I love this. The more, the more you learn, the more humble you become. That is Egla Chebet. Um, Jacob Kipchilis is saying, what is the difference between a leader and a manager? Also, what's the difference between a supervisor and a manager? mention more on the men mentorship as well. So he's asking you to mention more about uh, the mentorship programs that you do have. And then he's asking about the difference between a leader 
and a manager and also between a supervisor and a manager i think those are quite uh, common positions in organizations so maybe you'll take time to look at that uh tony koech and auliza kuamba the identity of Kip kipsorno <laughs> has finally been, been known <laughs> I am vindicated. Okay, so that was just a comment. So you can take those two questions. We have about 10 minutes to go. Yeah. So you can spend like five minutes to respond to those two people. And then we will go to we'll go to the tail end of our conversation. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. I think uh thank you for your question. Um uh, uh, I think uh transactional and uh, and transformational leadership. Are, are two different and you've brought it out very well because this is an area which most people have been grappling with and they don't understand really much uh i would just simply say that transactional leadership is a leadership system whereby somebody gets to lead because uh, he gives something out to in exchange of, of whatever they are trying to get so transactional really gets is you have to lead me because i have to pay you something you, I have to lead you because I have paid for this position and all that. So it's a more of a transactional kind of leadership. But what we young fan everybody is, is looking for is about a transformational leader. And a transformational leader is somebody who does not look at themselves as an individual or <clears throat> just the two people in themselves, but they are looking at a generation or the future or, or, or the bigger picture of situation. They are looking at transforming uh, a situation in themselves. And as we know, that transformation is really uh, moving from one form to another. It's just being that you have totally moved out of an, uh, one situation to another situation. So transformational leaders are leaders who look at the bigger picture. They empower other people. They are confident and they are ready to, 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 to let go and, and build as many leaders as much as possible. And therefore, we, we, we promote, and even at Leadcast Limited, we promote the element of transformational leadership other than transactional. And if you look at the politics of the day, it's more of transactional leadership than transformative leadership. Yeah. Well, um, maybe before you jump into that other question, let me add you another two. There's someone, uh, I was hosting a watch party on my wall and uh, Edwin Chemjor, who was uh, uh, our guest last week at a time like this, he's asking, uh, how do you manage your your time out and your very busy schedule maybe you'll also consider that and simon kelum is asking a question that we may have asked before but i think he has framed it differently is a leader born or man yeah yeah, yeah so uh, simon kelum thank you for the question of course the leaders are born uh, and i had already mentioned this initially people are born uh, they, I haven't seen a leader drop from heaven uh, just like that. But I know what the one, the question which you are trying to ask really is that is leadership an inborn thing or it's somebody can learn in the society as he goes along. So as we've uh, just reiterating and as we mentioned at the start of this uh, program, that leaders can actually learn. I mean, people can learn to be leaders and they just need to bring out that leadership in themselves. Yes, there are people who have the inclination or the environment where they have a chance to become a leader more than another person. But we've seen people who have come from even broken homes to even lead people. We've seen people who come from street, uh, being street urchins to become even uh, 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 parliamentarians or leaders in their own right. So leaders can actually be made and... Uh, in as much as all leaders will be born by somebody, but at the end of the day, somebody can learn leadership as we go along. Wow. So that's uh, for Simon Kelum. You can uh, go to the, the rest of the two people who may have had their questions. Do I read it for you or do you have them? Yes, I have them. I can see Jacob Kipchilis, Dr. Tari, uh, this is my colleague. <clears throat> He's asking about the difference between a leader and a manager. Uh, uh, and uh, just to make it simple as possible, the two are uh, quite different, but much more related because as a manager, you need to have leadership and as a, as a leader, you need also to be a manager. But a leader is somebody who looks at 
making sure that you are transforming and achieving and empowering and basically doing the right, uh, I mean, doing things in a right way. But a manager, on the other hand, makes sure that things are done in a systematic way. It's a person who ensures that the procedures are followed, the systems are put in place, and things are done right. So uh, the, 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 the Peter Drucker, who is a management guru, says leaders do the right things, but managers make sure things are done right. The right uh, way. In the right way and in the right manner, in the right procedures and all that. But as a leader, you still need that skill of being doing things the right way, but you need to look at it in a bigger picture because there is usually we usually say you could be cutting down trees in a forest, but you might be in the wrong forest in the first place. So as a leader, first of all, be aware that are you in the right forest before even you say, I am cutting down the trees, uh, all of them are falling down efficiently. Okay, maybe quickly before you 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 abandon the question answering, there is a gentleman. Maybe you can't see it because it is appearing on my wall. He's asking, mm -hmm. how do you balance your time uh, mm -hmm. between your busy schedule and doing what you uh, maybe consider it as a hobby, but it is taking more much of your time as well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that is a very important question, and most people really uh, struggle with this question. But I, I. I I'll always base my decisions on, um, uh, there's a book called uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Coffey. And uh, we have things which are important and they are urgent, and there are those things which are urgent and important. There are those things which are important, but they are not urgent at the moment. So I usually look at my issues and manage my time in that element. What really are the things which are important and they are not really urgent at the moment? Because if I concentrate a lot about the urgent things every time, rushing to do the urgent things which come on the on the on the day, I will find myself uh, not achieving the important things in life. So I'll always say, my advice to anybody who is struggling to balance their time is to always find the things which are important, but they are not urgent. And writing for me, I look at it as something which is quite important to me because that is my passion. And I always find time for that because even if it's not an urgent thing, somebody is not giving me a deadline and saying this is the, 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 the close of business today, I will be able to find time to do this because I think it's an important thing. But I always prioritize and look at the important things in my life and separate them from the urgent things. So if you find me writing, sometimes I say even if you call me at that time, it has already been fixed. Sorry, I'll not pick your call. I'll finish first of all my writing and then return your call at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, it's about prioritizing and uh, and making sure that you address the important things in your life. Yeah. Very well. I think you've attended uh, to all the questions that have been asked. And one thing that is sticking out from your last response to how to balance your time is prioritize your tasks. There are those that seem to be urgent, but they may not be that important. So know how to prioritize them and you will be able to balance your time and get to achieve your day's objectives as you had set during the beginning of the day or maybe the week and whichever the timelines that you had set. So we are like a minute to end our show and uh, have another like two, three questions to ask so maybe we'll spill over by like a minute or so and maybe we will apologize or rather request our viewers to stick around i know it's about uh, news time so before you go watching your news take this last two minutes and you will get to learn much from duncan barkevo now we are talking about leadership tonight and every county every country has a leadership uh, in place Based on your knowledge and your capacity as a trainer, a mentor, and a coach at the same time, what's your take about the leadership in Baringo at the moment? Are they effective? Uh, or rather, let me not ask it a, lead, a leading question like that. Do you think they are following the, the leadership um, skills and the characteristics that uh, you, you just outlined during the beginning of our show? And what are your recommendations as a trainer? Yeah, so I think um, 
uh, this is usually a very uh, tricky question because there is usually a difference between the true leadership and political leadership. And I usually ask, I tell people, a, a politician is not necessarily a leader, uh, and leaders are not necessarily politicians. Eh? So you will find that there are, uh, uh, politicians will always be thinking about the next elections, and uh, but a true leader will always be thinking about the next generation. So you will find that whatever we are seeing, for example, in the political leadership space in Baringo County or even at the Kenya landscape, is more of political leadership and, and uh, a political experiences is, is, is a common denominator in all of them. So uh, we, 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 we have leaders, yes, who are politicians and we have seen people who have the passion, the integrity, the compassion and, and, and the need to empower people and look at the bigger picture and get the generation, even the future generation be happy about their transformative leadership styles but we still have a gap and I, from my assessment, I know that there's still a huge gap because currently it is more of a transactional kind of leadership which is happening in the county and in the country. Whereby if you don't follow this way, you are, not, you are going to face consequences. You can, if you don't tell my line, you are out. There are people which hunting, they want to pull you down, to pull me down and everybody is thinking about the next election. And therefore, people are not looking at the next generation, maybe even 20 years or 50 years, what will happen to, to Baringo County, for example. Uh, and therefore, I would wish to recommend that as uh, a community and as, as people of uh, Baringo County, one of the things which we need to look at is as we select our leaders, let us look at people who have a transformative uh, kind of a leader uh, skill uh, instead of transactional leadership. That is why when I look at social media or I, I go to the village and go to the county and listen, there's a lot of discussing, oh, this one we will change this time. Oh, this one we do not. And yet you keep on changing and changing because you felt that this person, maybe you wanted something out of him. That is what we call transactional leadership. So I'll just come. I wanted you to give me a job because I gave you the, the, the position to be our MCA or our MP or our governor and you did not give me that job, and therefore I don't want you again. Without looking at the element of transformative agenda, are we having a person in that office who is having the vision and having the, gen the next generation in their mind? So I think to me, there's still a lot to be done in the, in the political leadership in this country and in our county in general, because we are yet to inculcate those skills and those leaders. We are yet to get those transformative leaders in the positions of power. Unfortunately, and I usually uh, say this, that the people who have these transformative ideas, again, don't get into this politics because they feel it is a muddy place. It is a place of uh, uh, rankles and all that. But at the end of the day, we need courage. People should have courage to take this responsibility and teach our people. We need to keep on talking to our people to understand what is true leadership and what is political leadership. Very well, and I think from what you've said is uh, clearly all is not lost and all these um, leadership um, characteristics that you had shared before can actually be inculcated and Duncan is encouraging you whom you believe that you have those qualities to dare come forward and take over this leadership and transform our county. So don't just sit there and say that politics is a dirty game bring your transformational leadership skills to the game and Baringo will definitely be a better place. Now, Duncan, I think it's your, your turn now to read a section of one of the chapters. Let me give you like, uh, I don't know, you need a minute or two. Yeah, so I need a mi uh, two minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I'll just read the prologue and uh, and maybe a, a small paragraph in the middle of my book. This is the book, The Memoirs of the Village Boy. And uh, this is a book which is now out and everybody can be able to get it. For those of us in Cabernet, you can easily get it. Their distribution centers just need to get to my inbox. So it just starts with this part which says, uh, when I look back uh, many years back, I realized that everyone's future can be different. I grew up in a family of 10. That is the sibling number. 
But at any, at, at, at any given time, we were 12 or 14, depending on who we had visited. A distant relative would send their daughter or son to stay with us for many days. Home was thus a busy place to stay. It was a beehive of activities. The young men were no less than six. I still wonder how my mother led and controlled such levels of testosterone at a go. She must have been tough and true to the word, she was tough. And she still is. I often get surprised of, uh, at how people say, oh, my mom, she's the sweetest of all people. Oh, I miss my mom and so on and so forth. I tell them, you haven't met my mother. I cannot recall a time she laughed at our actions. We, especially the boys, had to be on toes. Just one word and we were all scampering for safety or rushing to do an activity which she thought we were just being lazy to perform. I was the ship boy. My job entailed herding the ship over the weekends. The local primary school field was my grazing area. I owned the mathematics then. I had to count the ship every morning and every evening. Every, any loss would, would need extensive explanations to the satisfactions of mom. My elder brothers were responsible for the cows and farms. They were strong and gigantic, and, or, or I thought so then. Competition was fierce. During mealtimes, especially dinner, I had to be very cautious. Any subtle signs of showing loss of appetite would be a source of excitement from the troop. You don't feel like eating today? One of them would ask me on seeing my slow pace. Before I could utter anything, someone would answer for me, yes, he doesn't like eating today. The first inquiry would have already closed him, his hand straight close to the food, and then he would repeat the question just to be sure. You don't feel like eating. Before I deny the allegations, a good chunk of my food from my plate would have been scooped. If I was lucky, mother would rebuke him and he would coil away, mumbling words to justify that I was about to throw away food, which was a big sin before God. Yeah, so that is uh, the prologue, and um, and the, uh, it goes on and on, and the story about my my home and my family. Uh, yeah, so just to read a, a paragraph inside it, and uh, just uh, fast tracking the whole story, and I would like people to go and read. It has a lot of twists and turns about the village life. Uh, this is Kepsorno. It was away in the city for over three years. Despite a few visits for a weekend or a day or two, he could not believe that it had been such a long time. The city with his first life had engulfed him into a friends of activities that he never saw days and time pass by. In the city, everyone lived for himself. As they said, God is for them all. It was while in the city that his village became Ushago, a name that made his village just another place. He wished he could not say it, but it was popular in the city to proudly announce that one is going in or coming from Ushago, or Shaks, as they called it. That was the first thing that the city did to him. He slowly accepted the reality that his Orta village will now be an, a place without a name. Uh, and, 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 and it goes on and on to talk about how he arrived home to meet his former classmates and all that. It's an interesting story. I would urge everybody to get this book. It's a very yeah. interesting village life story. So maybe there's some who are wondering how I'm reading it and I'm not even showcasing on the screen. I'm reading it here. And whatever is actually reading is on page one or four. So you already know that I have the book. So you can also get yourself an electronic copy. You only need to liars with Duncan himself. And maybe Duncan, you will need to share the places. Where can people get this book? Yeah. So. So for now, we distribute it uh, uh, virtually. So you just need to get to my Facebook page that is Duncan Barkebo and drop me an inbox and I will link you up. We have distribution centers in Cabernet, Nakuru, uh, in Nairobi, and we can, we can send you wherever you are. So the book costs for 650 shillings and you can be able to get uh, your copy uh, as long as you just give us your address and we can link you up with uh, somebody near you or you can easily pick them from somewhere near you. Thank very well, you. very well. And I think why we are, we've just focused more on this book is just to appreciate what you're doing. And the journey of Kepsarno himself, it is pure transformation from a village boy into a leader. And that is actually your story, which everybody can relate with. So get yourself a, co a copy from the places that Duncan has mentioned. Do you have a phone number? Would you wish to share your phone number or maybe 
Yes, people yeah. can only connect you on Facebook. Yeah, so you can do use Facebook or my phone number, which is uh, uh, 0721 uh, 881695. 0721 881695. You can do a WhatsApp or SMS me, and uh, you can easily uh, we can link up and see where you can get the book. Very well, and that is a contact actually that is appearing on my electronic copy of this book so get yourself a copy and enjoy the read and finally uh, there are people who are watching and those who will be watching later what is what are your final words to these people tonight yeah so i think to me my final words on leadership is that every every person can be a leader and i just want to to emphasize that because uh, it is something which has made a lot of people not achieve whatever the success they want to achieve because they limit themselves, uh, the leader in, in them, without bringing it out to help them. As long as you have something in you, and it is true, God has given every person a gift in their lives. It is only you to recognize and, re and, 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 and get to re realize it because trapped in every person is a leader in themselves. And we seek that leadership is not about trampling or uh, stepping on people's heads to grow or pulling other people down. Leadership is about being a servant or sharing your, your gift or whatever you have or what has God has given you with other people. Because even as the Bible says, freely you received and freely you will give. So every person has been given a gift and uh, I always like the way Miles Mundro says that in the eyes of the manufacturer, the one who made you, there's always some purpose for you. And therefore, look around yourself. It could be something simple as just having a voice to speak on behalf of other people. And that gift is what you lead and you share with others. So leadership is basically serving, serving your gift to the society and not titles positions or anything to make other people fall down or uh, using your money to trample on others, but getting to share your gift and your and your passion to help other people in the society. That oh. would be my take home message. Thank you for taking your time, Duncan, for, to be with us tonight to discuss issues of leadership and how to start that journey towards being a leader in our own capacity and i think also as baringo news we've always strived to be the leader in baringo as an alternative media platform and i, th I believe that's what we are doing as baringo news and maybe uh things that you need to expect from baringo news are that new faces are coming on you realize that we launched a new we introduced a new show for every monday that is angaza live which will be hosted by john sergon uh, the former um, CEO for ICT Authority. On, you may not be seeing me again on every Wednesday and Thursdays. Somebody else is coming in and we are practicing consistency in giving you content that is transformational and content that is helping to inform and transform Baringo at large. So for tomorrow you will see a new face. Her name is Janet Kiriswo. She will be hosting our, our weekly show on every thursday the show that is this is baringo and also every wednesday every wednesday she will also be hosting the expert view so even us as baringo news we're striving to be leaders in what we are doing so thank you for giving us the insights tonight and we hope to live up to the dream and uh, until another time this is the expert view i'm your host Komen sk and have a good night Good night.